when did you decide to call yourself an actress in public? About three years in, four years in. And was it a show, or was that just no, a number of contracts? No, I think, or? well, it's, but you know, I've been working as long as I was in theater school. I think it's okay. I mean, I don't think that was my reasoning. I don't really know why, when. I don't even really know when I wanted to even be an actor, because I've done it since I was a kid. I thought that my next door neighbor, who was a British actress named Elizabeth Walsh, I grew up in Etobicoke and then Port Credit, you know, a little 1950s, you know, um, suburb where you walked around the block and you played hide and seek at night on the streets. And, and I thought she had organized a theater group. Well, apparently, she told me I went to her door with my friend when I was eight and said, Could you direct us in a play? What was the play? Pandora's box. <laughs> and Elizabeth, Mrs. Walsh, had a very strong British accent. And I ended up doing a British accent, not trying to. I still remember, oh, so you managed to get out of your box, did you? That's how I sounded at eight. Because it had gone, uh, that's how, what I had heard every day in rehearsal. And it was osmosis. You have always seemed to me have a core of confidence in what you do. Is that true? My impression of Shauna is she seems to have this core of confidence of what she's doing. It's a great act that got good reviews. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I have always been perceived that way, even as a child. I remember a girlfriend saying to me, oh, you've got it all together, you don't have any problems. And um, I think I'm very private. And inside, how does the confidence work? Oh, I have deep insecurities. You know, like, yes, I have. I have many insecurities. Although I love, uh, I love uh, being in plays. I, 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 I feel that when I'm on stage, I'm walking into my element. Um, when I was eight, I, you know, I, I never played with dolls, but I did play with puppets. My father built me a puppet theater, and I, uh, I amused myself with puppets. That's what I did. Because you enjoyed the characters you were creating? I enjoyed the characters, and I enjoyed reading. I was a big reader. And, uh, and when we played, you know, house, you know, with your friends in the neighborhood, I usually played the father. <laughs> I never played the ingenue, and that continued in theater school. Um, so there obviously was perceived this kind of something about me that wasn't going to play the young ingenue or, you know, the, your parts will come to you when you're in your 30s, they would tell me, or something. That, um, you know, or I remember auditioning for CBC and, well, you have a period face. Uh, what does that mean? It means, you know, you're not really <laughs> 1980s attractive, right? Um, but. So I, and I don't think I was shy, except I did feel slightly other. I think I was always observing. I think I was always watching. And um, as a kid, my dad, I asked my dad, what kind of kid was I? And he said, you were quiet. Because you lived inside? Me. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. A and very active dream life. I remember, you know, vivid dreams and things. But I don't know if I was... I mean, I was a very good student. I did very well academically. And what I did you take it. academically at Trinity? I was an honors English major. It was right. a bit of political philosophy, a little French thrown in. And you threw that away from the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I threw it away from the theater. And, good. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I did have one theater course. When UC just started their theater program, I had a theater course there uh, with Cynthia Grant and Barry Karp <coughs> were teaching then. Uh, so that was it. So that was kind of wild to come from your theater class in your leotard and then put on your black gown to have lunch at St. Hilda's. That was kind of, I was an aberration, even there. <laughs> Let's go back to the confidence, because I think it's important to the performers. A lot of people think, well, performers, you're all extroverts. You know, you just love being out there. But many performers mm -hmm. only feel comfortable when they step into a part on stage. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, I feel pretty comfortable in my skin now. Uh, I, 
um, I was always interested in um, uh, language. You know, um, that's I suppose why I was an honors. I had you know three English courses in high school, my last year when we had grade thirteen here in Ontario, and I had fabulous, fabulous English teachers and a fabulous theater arts teacher in high school, Bridget Harrison. Um, uh, she was born Bridget Blackwell. She used to act in London with Victor Garber, and she became this extraordinary teacher. Taught David Clark, Stephen York, um, Jimmy Rankin. So uh, she, we were doing plays. The plays we were doing were The Crucible, Midsummer Night's Dream, Trojan Women, um, Cyrano de Bergerac. So you know these, and and Beckett's play for the Sears Festival. Yeah. So so I had quite an education that way. I was exposed to a lot of, and the whole school was exposed to it because we had assemblies where they would have to watch the absurdest one act plays that the grade thirteens had been working on. <laughs> Wow. What was her name again? Her name is Bridget Harrison. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see her afterwards when your career was? Every year we'd have a picnic. And uh, she would bring many teachers and her husband, Bill Harrison. <sighs> yeah. Those from our past to which we owe so much. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. She, she, she made you believe that a life in the theater was not only possible, but valuable. Right. That it was uh, um, an addition to society, a, a necessity for society. I mean, my history teacher, Charlie Novogradsky, who I found out many years later, who I'll be seeing this week, uh, lived in a commune in Toronto and came in. And he taught history. And he and Bridget took us to see the farm show in 1972 in Toronto as high school students. Uh, we went to see, you know, under the gray whack, we went to see things that were happening in that burgeoning uh, decade in Toronto. So I, I, I was exposed to a lot. So I think I was always... Uh, what did you think of the farm show? I loved it. I thought there was this one actor who I thought was very good. I said, he's very good. Wouldn't be... M it would P, be, would it? It would be Miles Potter, <laughs> who's now my husband, who I've been with for 30, well, five years, six. What year is it? 36. Um, but yeah, I thought, well, he's very good. 